Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, it's a little dark in here, but uh, this is a, a booth I set up in a spare room at my mom's house um, before we moved to the Netherlands. I had come up here a few weeks prior to us moving because my mom had shoulder surgery and I was helping her out. Then uh, when we moved, we actually left California, came back up here to Washington State and visited family um, before we flew out of Seattle to Amsterdam. Uh, so while we were doing, while I was doing both of those things, I um, needed to do some work. So this is a little booth I set up uh, in a room in my mom's house in order to um, be able to record and have it not sound um, terrible. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do while I was here was was to do a comparison of some of the fast food restaurants they have here compared to the ones they have in the Netherlands. Uh, there's like six or seven different American fast food restaurants in the Netherlands, which I want to um, try here. And then once I get back home, try them and see how they compare. Before I do that, though, I wanted to go over some of the things that I miss food wise um, in the Netherlands. Uh, most most foods I'm not I'm fine with. Um, they don't do some foods well in the Netherlands, like Mexican foods, one of my favorites, but you can't really get really good Mexican food over there. I really love Thai food. They have some okay Thai food. Some of those things I'm learning how to make on my own uh, while there. So I'm not really missing it as much because I can still cook it. Um, there are some specific products that I miss that are more on the junk food side. Of course, because America does junk food very well. Now, before... Um, in the years before we moved, I tried to cut down on junk food. Obviously, um, we ate very little fast food and, um, you know, I cut down on sugar, you know, being over, you know, trying to lose weight and get in better health. Um, I used to drink, um, energy drinks in, in construction, you get into this cycle of just drinking a lot of energy drinks and I drank any energy drinks for a while. And then I cut down to just sugar free energy drinks, which still aren't good for you. Um, and then a few years before we moved to the Netherlands, I, I, I switched to coffee. And I was never a, a big fan of coffee. I was never a coffee drinker. So I would just make some coffee. I actually got coffee from a company called Bones Coffee Company. Uh, they have very good coffee, and they have a bunch of different flavors. Now, most of the flavors, to me, have they, they taste like fake flavoring. Um so if you have a, a coffee or any product that's supposed to be s'mores flavored, they have to add a bunch of artificial flavorings to make it taste like marshmallow and graham cracker and whatnot. And I've never liked a lot of artificial flavorings. They Any product that has a lot of artificial flavorings, I've never been a fan of. But they did have a dark roast, dark chocolate coffee that was really good. It just had a little hint of chocolate. Um, I would add a tiny bit of sugar and a tiny bit of cream and that would be much better for me than, you know, uh, even a sugar-free energy drink because the chemicals in those are terrible, even if there's no sugar. Fake sweeteners and all that kind of other stuff, caffeines and all the the supplements inside of it that are supposed to give you energy are, are not actually that good for you. So I cut those out and I was just drinking coffee. And then, and I wasn't a fan of Starbucks. Everybody in, in America loves Starbucks. My wife drank Starbucks a lot. I was never a big fan, but they did have a chocolate cream cold brew that they came out with. And every once in a while, I would go out and I'd pick one of those up in the morning. And it was really good. So I thought, well, now that I'm here, I can, I can grab one because I liked them a lot. In the Netherlands, once we got to the Netherlands, I, dr I just drink coffee over there now. And the coffee is way better. Not that some of you are going to be surprised. But when we got to our Airbnb... When we first flew over there, they had a coffee machine. It wasn't a Keurig, but it was like a coffee machine where you can make one cup and they had these little like these little pouches of of coffee that you could put in there. And it was just like a generic brand. And I had one cup and it was delicious. It was delicious coffee. So now I have my own coffee maker and I just buy store brand ground coffee. And that's. That's all, like, I haven't even tried better kinds of coffee yet. I'm sure there's better. But just the store brand pre-ground coffee it was so much better, and that's what I drink now. So I'm interested in seeing what it's going to be like to try out a chocolate cream cold brew from Starbucks. So here it is. I got a, a grande chocolate cream cold brew. It's cold brew with some sort of chocolate cream on top. You can see this, this 
chocolatey foam on top. Um, it smells chocolatey. It smells ch more like chocolate than like coffee. Wow, <clears throat> that is really bitter. I don't know that I could drink this whole thing and enjoy it. It's, um, there's, there's a little hint of chocolate, but the rest is just really bitter. It's almost like, oh, like somebody burnt. It's like burnt, like the bitterness you get from burnt popcorn. It's very bitter, very harsh. And I'm surprised I liked this before, unless they changed something in the, in the months that I've been gone, which I can't imagine. I can't imagine that I like, and I really liked that coffee before because I wasn't a coffee drinker before. I don't like the bitterness in most coffee here. So thinking that I liked that a lot is odd. The other beverage that you can get here in the U.S. that you can't get in Europe is Cherry Pepsi. Now they have Pepsi, they have Coke, um, they have various American sodas, and then they have their sugar-free options, but they don't have cherry, regular Cherry Pepsi. They have Cherry Pepsi Max which is sugar-free, which has fake sweetener, and it tastes gross. Anything with a lot of fake sweetener is gross to me, and I don't know that that's a really uh, a rare opinion. Um, you know, there are a few things that have a, a tiny bit of fake sweetener, which I can move past if the other flavors are enough to overpower it, but something like a soda, just having the only sweetener be fake sweetener is is not good. It's so I miss Cherry Pepsi. In an effort to eat better and be healthier, I cut out a lot of soda, but everything in moderation. I would have one occasionally, and uh, I really, probably my favorite soda anywhere is a Cherry Pepsi. So here I actually got a six pack and I've already actually drank a few of them. It is just as delicious as I remember. Um, it is, uh, doesn't taste any different to me. Uh, again, I try to cut out more soda, and unfortunately, while I'm here, I'm going to end up eating a bunch of junk because I want to, like I said earlier, I want to test out fast food and then go back home and compare it to the fast food, the American fast food restaurants there. I bought a six pack and I've already drank a couple of them. And uh, this, this is the third out of that six pack. But what we're doing here, we're helping clean out my mom's garage and basement. I'm getting a lot of exercise. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I can balance that. But while I'm here in America, I am indulging a little more than I normally would. In the Netherlands, um, if I do drink a soda, it's generally a uh, like a lemon lime. I, I just buy the generic brand. Um, and there they, they have one that's not lemon lime. It's just lemon, uh, which I like. And then they also have like the Fanta sugar free, uh, lemon, which I think the lemon, that's one of the things where the lemon flavor, uh, is more so than the fake sugar. And so I'll have one of those occasionally as well. When we get to food. So I didn't eat, we didn't eat a lot of fast food before we left. We cut down on, on a lot of the garbage food we ate before we left, years before we left. And in the morning, so I get up really early. I get up at like four o'clock in the morning. I will look at my phone for a little bit and then I'll get up and I'll get some coffee and then I'll go to my office and I start working and recording stuff really early. Everybody's still asleep so there's no noise in the house. My office is, is pretty well insulated. Um, even the few th things I can hear um, going on in the house. Don't get picked up on my mic, but you know, once the sun comes up, there's a, there's a window right by my desk and the birds start squawking and I don't want that to pick up. So I, I usually get all my recording done real early in the morning and generally I'll get up, uh, I'll do some recording and then I'll make myself something to eat like a little pre breakfast before anybody else is up. And usually it's pretty protein heavy. Usually it's eggs, uh, some sort of other meat, uh, you know, occasionally I throw some toast in there, but also, I'll add whatever leftovers we might have from the night before. If there's some rice or uh, if I made tacos, there's some tortillas. I'll make it into a breakfast burrito, that kind of thing. And sometimes I, I just want a simple breakfast sandwich, you know, bun, fried egg, piece of ham, piece of cheese. Easy. Before we moved, I figured out that the breakfast jack from Jack in the Box 
was exactly what I was normally making. And I went online and I got all the information and the cal caloric intake and all that stuff. It was exactly the same. So for a few bucks, I would just, if I wasn't feeling like going into the kitchen, dirtying up a pan, making myself, you know, or maybe I didn't have the supplies. I like to get, you know, a nice soft bun to put it on. And maybe I was out where we lived before we moved in California. There was a Jack in the box right around the corner. So I just run over there, pick a couple up. There were a few bucks each. That was, you know, easy enough. Well, they don't have Jack in the box at all in the Netherlands as far as American fast food restaurants that they do have there. Uh, but Jack in the box isn't one of them. So I thought, well, I'll grab one and check it out and see if I still like it. So the first thing that stands out to me about the breakfast Jack is the price. Uh, they used to be a couple of bucks. I, I, you know, I think maybe less than for a long time, they were like a dollar 20. And then the price went up, you know, and in, in, in the time that we, before we moved, they were, they were in a, a couple of dollars. And uh, so now two breakfast jacks before tax came to a total of $9 and 18 cents. So that means that a single breakfast jack was $4 and 59 cents. This is the sandwich right here. This is the $4.59 breakfast jack sandwich. This is it. It's a simple white bun. There's a single fried egg, a single piece of ham, and a piece of American cheese. This was $4.59. cents. It's fine. I don't, I don't think it tastes any different than I remember it. The problem that I have is that the food quality is so much better in the Netherlands than it is here. So I don't know what it is they do, but eggs in the Netherlands are just delicious. They taste so much better than the eggs here. I think that people have said the same thing about people who, who raise chickens and get fresh eggs from them. So I don't know what what it is in the processing of, of mass produced eggs in the U S is, but it, they don't do it in the Netherlands and it, the eggs are delicious. So I imagine if I made this at home, like I used to before we moved, it would taste a lot better because the eggs, I mean, the just a, just a fried egg is, is delicious. I'll just make a couple of fried eggs in the morning and eat them, you know, piece of ham easy. Of course, when I make them myself, I don't normally use American cheese because I'm not a big fan of the processed American cheese, though I don't hate it. It's just, as an American, you're just used to it. Um, normally, I use Swiss. My favorite kind of cheese is Swiss. So, But I honestly cannot believe that this was $4.59. Um, that, is, that, is, that is robbery. And I guarantee you that Jack in the Box, as a corporation... They make more than enough money that this doesn't have to be $4.59. The other thing that I always liked at Jack in the Box was the tacos. There's people who hate the tacos. There's people who love the tacos. As far as tacos go, they're like a whole different animal. My favorite type of food is Mexican food. I love tacos. And generally, I love a good authentic street taco. Um, you know, I like a soft taco in a, in a flour tortilla. I like a soft taco and a corn tortilla. I like a crispy taco. I love it all with Mexican food and I love a good taco. Jack in the box tacos are not good tacos. They're not authentic tacos. It's, it's like, it's, it's like a whole different thing. It should be called something else, but they are just a weird, um, guilty pleasure to every once in a while, stop by and get two tacos from Jack in the box. And again, there's no Jack in the Box in the Netherlands, so I figured I'd grab two tacos and see what I think of them now. And this is the taco. And for this, it was $2 for two tacos. It used to be a dollar for two tacos or 99 cents. The price went up to $1.20, I think $1.50 at some point. Uh, now it seems that it's $2 for two tacos. These are the regular two tacos. I think they also have a monster taco, which has more stuff on it, which is more expensive. But this is the regular jack-in-the-box taco. And it's just this whole shell with the meat in it. They they drop the whole thing in the deep fryer. Then they add some cheese and some lettuce and some sauce in it. And this is just one of those things that's like, it's just a weird American 
thing that some people love, and I always did, and I'm going to give it a shot. It's still good. It tastes exactly like I remember it. You know, it has, um, you know, that guilty pleasure. Like, it's just the meat. Nothing about it is great, but it's so good. I, I don't know if you get that, but you got to let me know. Like, if you understand that whole, like, it's like watching a really bad movie, you know, like, but it's so bad, it's good. It, it's like that. That's the Taco Bell tacos are the bad movie of tacos. So right now, those are the those are the food items that I, I can think of that I miss. Um, as far as like overall cuisine, I definitely miss spicy food. The Netherlands doesn't have a lot of spicy food. I go to an expat shop that sells specific items from the U.S. and the U.K., and I get hot sauce there. My favorite hot sauce before we moved was Tapatio, but uh, they don't sell that there, but they, they sell a Cholula sauce, which is pretty good as well. I've purchased a couple of hot sauces from our local grocery store, and they're not very good. They're kind of... I don't know, they're kind of like tangy in a weird way. And they just don't, they don't, then they're not very spicy. Dutch people don't use a lot of spice. It's like something spicy to them is like they added some paprika. So it's hard to find good spicy food. And of course, Mexico is is not close to to Europe. Obviously, having lived in Southern California, even up here in Washington, there's a lot of really good Mexican food because, well, the country borders Mexico. Um, they've got some places that claim to be like Mexican food and they're just not really great. Um, so I miss that. I make tacos myself probably about once a week. Um, and I working on putting together something decent for some like nachos. Uh, the corn tortilla chip options in the Netherlands also are a little off, but they're, they're okay. Um, my wife and I ordered burritos from a place not that long ago, which were pretty decent. My next favorite food is Thai food. Um, you can get some okay Thai food there. I got some Pad Thai. Um, there is uh, also a place that sells lumpia. I, should, I know it's not Thai, but uh, there's a guy in a food truck that serves lumpia. That's pretty good. And we've ordered some Chinese food. The Chinese food was a little mushy and the flavor was a little bland, but... So far, you know, we're working out some of those options. There's definitely a lot more for us to try. So as far as missing that goes, um, it's not as bad. But these specific items that you you can't get in in the Netherlands are things that I wanted to try. And I'd say for the most part, uh, at the end of the day, the Starbucks coffee is very disappointing. The coffee is just bad. Uh, the cherry Pepsi tastes exactly like a cherry Pepsi, and I still love it. I'm going to try not to drink too much of it while I'm here, and then I'm going to go back home and not be able to get it ever again. And then, of course, the Jack in the Box food tastes exactly the same. The Breakfast Jack, I can live without. Um, you know, it's fun to have the tacos every once in a while, but at the end of the day, not the end of the world. If you have any questions or suggestions for my channel, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this channel, you can click subscribe and continue on this journey with me. Thanks so much, and be safe.